Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, I'm really excited to be here all the way from New York uh, to talk about the research that I've done in the last year about ethical content uh, management and uh, LARP creation. Um, this research was originally done for an article I did for the WeirdCon companion book back in the US. And I've done some additional research uh, because this is honestly a topic that's very near and dear to my heart. Uh, more specifically, though, I'm here to talk tonight about the freedom of creation uh, versus the uh, uh, safe spaces in LARP. In the last few years, the focus of my work has been traveling around to the many corners of the world as I can uh, to study the traditions, innovations, and design problems that make up our vibrant LARP community. And while I've only managed to touch a fraction of the LARP world, one topic ha that's come to the forefront of conversations everywhere I've gone I um, is how to make games safe environment for players. Uh, I don't just mean safe so that people don't step on a log and need to go to the hospital, um, but I'm also talking about uh, emotional and psychological safety that invites players to let themselves go and play a LARP in trust and security. Uh, and never did this topic become so important as when speaking to people about serious games and, that might be deem uh, and content that might be deemed questionable or adult or mature. Uh, considering the forum for tonight's talk, uh, I'm going to start it with something of a well-known stereotype. People say that Nordic LARPs are a little rough on players. <laughs> um, when I first discovered Nordic LARPs in general, uh, I'd heard that when you go to a Nordic LARP, you cry a lot, terrible things happen to you, uh, you have to go into a corner afterwards and debrief for ages because something terrible is going to happen and emotionally you're going to need to talk about it. Um, of course, that's just a stereotype and there's many kinds of Nordic LARPs, uh, but there's always a grain of truth in everything that you hear. Um, and you know, there are some, there is a lot of Nordic LARPs that actually do include a lot of what we'd call serious or mature content. But it's not just Nordic LARPs that are doing that, of course. Across the world, LARPs are including uh, content and tackling issues that if you were going to use the movie rating system from the United States, would be considered uh, rated M for mature or rated R. Games can touch on issues of abuse, violence, sexuality, gender politics, racial issues, economic imbalance, political upheaval, serious phobias, body image and ableism, uh, and questions of religion. You know, all those things you're not supposed to talk about at dinner parties or polite <laughs> situations. Um, and those topics are included for a lot of reasons, but I believe that sp they are predominantly included in games because LARPs are, uh, LARPs are both a game form and an art form uh, that have the power to touch people through collaborative, performative play. Uh, the power of LARP lies in the ability for players to step into a scenario and experience something with all five of their senses, something that will translate and live in their memory. Um, th th this is specifically done through an uh, immediate and unmediated uh, environment. So when they engage with games that include mature content, for some players, these issues can trigger deep emotional and psychological responses, some of which are positive, meaningful, and even revelatory. Unfortunately, for some, a game can also trigger uncomfortable, troubling feelings as well, depending on the individual and their response to the, to the content. Uh, when speaking about these issues, though, it's very important to, un to note what triggers are. It's a term that gets thrown around a lot, but there's not a lot of definition about what that actually is. Uh, triggers are loosely defined as stimuli that can co uh, connect. Wait, let's actually get that up there. Oops. There we go. Um, Triggers are loosely defined as stimuli that can connect a traumatic past emotion or experience to the present moment. And they are different for each player in every game. What triggers one person may be a safe topic for another. That makes the inclusion of hot button topics like mature content a potential minefield for offending, harming, or triggering past emotional and psychological trauma in a player. And since games are meant to be collaborative spaces where players can enjoy an event together, the question kept coming up. How do you ethically include the mature content in a game when the inclusion can be such a minefield for your player base? Uh, after studying a lot of discussions about safety and safe spaces in games, I believe the ethical question goes deeper than the how. There are tactics, tips, and ideas about how to include that content. There are entire panels about safety that happen all around the world, and it would take a lot longer than the time that I have here to go through all of those things. Um, but I want to focus on a question that I think lies at the heart of the debate, at the heart of the hows, down behind all of the worries about debriefs or the proper way to do workshops, um, it is a question that's haunted the debates I've had, uh, namely, who is responsible for making LARPs a safe space? Problematic content creates powerful experiences, experiences that would be poorer without in our games. 
There is no question that designers, organizers, and players have the right to free form, uh, uh, I'm sorry, have the right to f uh, freedom of expression in their games. Uh, game designers must have the freedom to create whatever they want, no matter the content, to censor any, any creative community based on the possibility of uh, transgression is to limit the possibility of the art being created. For freedom of design to occur, creators have to be able to integrate material that might be offensive to some. But there's a catch to that freedom. If the art in question is a LARP, which is community-based uh, by nature and reliant on communal buy-in to flourish, there are consequences to those creative choices that you make. And the responsibility for the management of those consequences lies in the hand of everybody in the community. So who has to worry about how and when that content is deployed? Who is responsible? The answer that I came up with is everyone in the community. One of the very first things I learned as a game designer came from a very smart editor friend of mine named John Adamus. And he said, in his words, game design is the act of making choices. And once you make those choices, you work with the consequences of what you've chosen. <sighs> when, whether, the game, uh, whether you design a game, organize one, or participate as a player, you are constantly engaged in the act of making choices that shape the community space around you. The consequences of those choices will dictate whether or not the game space you foster is a negative one uh, for other players uh, that makes the trusting play more difficult, or whether you create an environment that lets players open up to deep, meaningful, and enjoyable experiences together. I'm going to do something dangerous for a second and actually talk about how I define LARP. <laughs> I know, right? Um, I'm of the school of thought that says that LARPs are not just games, but they are also art, and an act of creation that's done collaboratively between the designers, organizers, staff, and players. Together, the community comes together uh, and, create and brings the LARP into existence. Yet at the center of that creation is that single word, community. And the tension of the communal creation uh, at, that is at the center of this entire debate is the idea that creating in a good way for, uh, for the whole, um, as, well as, um, as well as yourself, can often be a tension. The freedom of expression while creating is such a fundamental idea that the very thought of censorship sets off incredible negative shockwaves whenever it's mentioned. Communal consideration during content creation sounds really simple, but can fly in the face of uh, the idea of individual expression. Whether you're talking about a designer's individual right to create a game about a difficult subject, or a player's wish to, uh, to go after their own agenda in a game, uh, the right of freedom of expression is often at odds with the idea that what you can create has the equal chance of having a positive or negative consequence for a fellow community member. And the choices that result in negative consequences for other players can contribute to making that game an unsafe space. But to look at why, we need to look at the LARP structure itself. Oops. There we go. Um, organizers and, and LARP designers create the structures for the players to come together, while the players engage together with those structures to create the community of play. Social contracts like this are communal contracts that give people the p that give the individuals the power that they need to opt into a game. From Hoytzika to Zimmerman and Salen, Mandela to Yule, the spirit of play is considered a vital piece of that social contract. O one only has to look back at the history of the game design discourse to note that the playful spirit and the maintenance of its integrity is vital to a healthy game community. The responsibility for any violations that occur to that social contract lies in the hands of the person presenting the content that is in violation, that creates the issues, and ought to be weighed against the freedom of expression that the blank canvas of LARP design can present. Now, despite the fact that I've used one term throughout this entire thing of safe space, I'm going to challenge that I believe and I think that the term safe space is actually a mistaken one. Because of the unscripted communal creation style that LARP is, it's impossible to be certain that any play space is going to be a safe one because each player has the freedom to choose their actions, and because every person in the community has a different level of offense and different triggers, there is no way to know that a game space will be free of questionable content. Instead, I want to introduce a different term. I want to introduce the idea of responsible spaces instead, spaces in which participants acknowledge communal responsibility and join with their fellow players to construct places where the needs of the whole are just as important as the freedom of individual expression. Therefore, the choices lie in the hands of each individual engaged in this gaming social contract 
to consider themselves, themselves, their fellows, and the health of the community in general. Thank you very much.